Have you ever heard of a plugin called Data Tables? It is a very, very powerful tool that you could definitely utilize in your project. And if you have not, this video is just right for you. By the time you're done with this particular video, you're going to be like, oh my God, it is so easy to create HTML table into a filtered search criteria and a whole that jazz. So let me just show you what a regular HTML table looks like. So this is just your plain Jane regular HTML, nothing special about it. You can literally just print this on your page and that is that. And just for housekeeping, I am using a bootstrap five for this particular project. So that is that. So now that we got that out of the way. And obviously one more thing using jQuery, my love jQuery is amazing. So this is once again, a regular HTML. And if you want to convert this table into your data tables, all you really do is I'm going to show you and it is so, so easy. Just one line of code is going to take this table and convert it into something amazing that looks like this. Wow. I know you're like, holy crap. It completely changed the look and feel of it. So let me show you a regular table data tables and here on the left hand side you have different number of entries that you will be able to show whether you want to show only 5 25 50 100 so on and so forth and then you have columns in which you can sort through it you're going to do ascending descending so on and so forth and then at the bottom it will show you the total number of entries and then on the right hand side over here, you can search literally whatever you type in here and we'll search through the whole HTML table. So let's say if I want to search for this name here, all I'm going to do is just type in M A R and it's going to literally filter through that particular table, the whole table. So that is literally just one way to do it right but obviously you don't want to have just one table on your page and that's the only thing that your project will have obviously your project will it's a possibility include where you have to connect to a database and from there grab the data from there and then put it into a table and sort through it so i already have done that for you and in here, I have this table in my database called test. It's called just literally called my table. And it has uh, five column. First one is your ID. And then first name, last name, email, and IP address. And just keep in mind, obviously, this is all fictitious data. Nothing crazy going on here. So it's not real. So these are not your real email addresses or anything like that. So this is just something that I just made up. So... Let's move on. So what I'll do is I'm going to go over here and then I'm going to click on Ajax database table. So what this is going to do when I click over here is going to go to this table and grab all of 100 rows, which is right here, and then put them out in a JSON. And then from the JSON, I'm going to convert it into the html table and then we're going to convert all of those html table data into data tables so here we go click this button and within a few seconds it just comes up and also now you will see something different so we have number entries so we can do a drop down box here and then over here it tells you at the bottom total number of entries are 100 and then we have paging and when you see just one line of code, it literally does all of this. So we have page one, two, three, four, five, and then dot, 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 and 10. So if you want to go to the page 10, it will go here and then we can reverse the order. So if I want to go to page nine, I can click on previous, 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 until I get to the point where I'm on the first page. And then obviously I can go forward as well.
So from here, let's just say I don't want to go look through only one uh, set of record, which is just 10 entries. I can go over here and say, show me 25 records. And then what also it does is it automatically adjusts the number of pages or paging, I guess, if you want to call it that. It will adjust that for you. So let's say if I want to have uh, 50. So now I'm only going to have two uh, entries in here. You got one. And they got two and that's that so what i'll do is over here i'll show you one more thing so obviously i can filter through it where which means i can go up and down uh ascending descending or any of the column right and then also i could do a search for it so let's just say code with mark and then here it is and literally by the time i show you this i just with this one line of code it is so powerful that it can do so many different things. And then also I will show you in which if you want to update a particular cell or a column, let's say, for example, the first name, I'll put it just 007. And then when I click out of it, this is going to automatically go into my table, my SQL table, and it will update it. So just to show you. So here it is. So I'll just take, there it is so right now. This is, uh, next what I'll do is I'll change this email address to something else. So I'll just call this, uh, I don't know, gmail.com. Why not? And click out of it. And then if you get this message and a few seconds later, message disappear. And if I go back here, refresh this session, make sure that it did update my my sql table so i'll refresh it and then there it is all right so that's all fine and dandy and if i just go back to my regular table here and then go back here fetches it and here it is so that's all fine and dandy you're like that's great mark awesome love it now how do i incorporate that into my project all right so let's go look at the meats and potato and the thing that you really care about is the code and i will also leave the link in the description for you in case if you want to implement this particular thing into your own project so let's go over here we have a couple of files in here three files one is the ajax file which goes into your mysql connects to it and then there is this table i mean the class that i created which is simple db class it just does all of your uh connection to mysql uh tables databases the whole nine yard is pretty cool so let's look at all the way top and what i'll do is i'll delete this out because i don't care about that so i'm using jquery awesome font you really don't need it but I'll just include that. You know what? I'll delete it. When you download this file, you won't see it. So the only thing you will see is your jQuery, your bootstrap, and then this two line of codes is your data table library. And that's that. And then we will move on to the uh, part where the HTML is. So this is your regular table first name last an email and this is where you will see this thing pretty plain Jane nothing special going on and that that's what it does and then what I do is I obviously if you have watched any of my previous uh, videos you know I like to use when I build my project is called the container container loading framework that's something that I have built myself and i have taught other people to do it and it's pretty pretty interesting so think of it this way you on the left hand side you have a container and on the right hand side you have a container i mean in the middle you have a container and on the right hand side you have a container so if we put our template data lack of a better word on the right hand side and anytime we want to use that template we just go in here, scoop up that piece of code and bring it onto our screen, which would be the middle one. And that's what it's exactly what's happening. And that's something that I use in my project, like I said, and I'll also include it here. So this part of the code, which is your regular HTML table, 
and then whenever I click on this HTML table, convert to data table, uh, Ajax data table, anytime it is triggered by this particular button. It's called BTN underscore TBL and then call type HTML convert Ajax. And then whenever it gets clicked, it's going to scoop up first for, let's say this one right here, HTML. It's going to scoop up all of this and put it into this empty container. And that will become our screen loading container. So just to give you a visual right now, if I click over here, there is nothing showing. Nothing will come up until I click on this HTML table button. And then this will come up. And when I click on this convert to database table, it should have said data table. Let me fix that real quick. Uh, let's say data table. And if I refresh it, all right, so here it is, convert to data table. So the issue, this is it, and convert to data table, and here it is. So that's that. So let's now look at the actual my JavaScript code. So we'll go all the way up because there is one function that I want to have you use it that's going to help you take your regular JSON data and convert it into a uh, HTML table and you don't have to do a lot of work. And this is the function right here. And it will take two parameter, which is your data array, which will be any JSON data that you have, you put in here. And second column would be array with only column names. And <clears throat> one thing I will tell you, I won't go into the whole code of this because it's pretty self-explanatory for the most part, but I will go for over the most important parts of it, which is your header. So in this case, this, this section right here is the header of it. So in here, you will find a header container and each header container will have its name. And the same thing for the row, you will have a row, table row, and then within the row, you will have cell or columns. And then each column is wrapped around in a div and a class called container. And then each container, column container, will have a column name so in this case if i go over here so this right here is your column <clears throat> am i using it here or am i not i don't think i'm using here it's in here as well so just to give you an idea right here so this is your column column and then column name is id which will match the database and also will match any JSON data that you have. At this point, you're like, okay, whatever, it doesn't make any difference. You know, it's just a column name, but as you will see it soon enough, it will make a world of a difference. And once you start to utilize this methodology, you are gonna be able to do a whole bunch of stuff and manipulating your table like left and right, like there is no tomorrow. So just keep that in mind and use this function to create your own tables and you'll see how easy it is. So every time when we click this button right up here, HTML, convert to data table, Ajax, so on and so forth, it gets triggered by this particular event of code right here. So from here, I'm gonna get the call and then I'm gonna put this screen data, which I showed you before, uh, into this variable and then I'm gonna grab the template and assign it to this variable and if I click on the HTML part of it I'm gonna take this put it into my screen container which is right over here so I'm gonna scoop all of this and dump it in here as if I were to just take this put it here and move it and that's, that. that's literally what I'm doing with the JavaScript. So here we go. So here it is. This goes in here. 
So anytime I click on the HTML, this will do that. And then also, this is where the magic is going to happen for you as far as data table goes. So I will, it's the same one if when I click on the convert button, the only difference is it will take this line of code to convert all of your HTML table into table data table. And then the only thing that you have to keep in mind that you will need to assign the element that your table has. So for example, if I scroll down my table, which is this attribute, it could be ID, it could be a class or whatever. I would recommend you use class because it makes just life a whole lot easier. But if you want to use ID, you can use ID. So in this case, it will be ID equal tables or something like that, whatever you want to use it, right? And you give take that particular ID or class. In this case, I will use class. This element, it is what you will need to put it here in front of it. And then data table is going to go take that table, your HTML table and convert it into its framework. And that is that it is that simple. So that is literally just this one line of code. And then you will take your regular HTML and convert it into this amazing looking data table. All right. So let's move forward. The next part is going to blow your mind because this is just pure using jQuery and manipulating your HTML table to the point where you're like, holy crap. All right. So I'm using an Ajax function, going to my Ajax PHP, which is right here. And then once again, I'm using this simple database class that I created a long, 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 long time ago. You can utilize it if you like in your project. I use it for all my project. It is amazing, simple, it's like one file. You don't need anything fancy fancy to do it. Just literally put it in your project and include it and that's that. And it takes several parameter, which would be your host name. In this case, I'm just using local host, user ID, password, database, and that's that. And you could set that equal to a variable and then if you want to uh, initiate it, you simply use that and assign it to a variable. And once you assign it to a variable, you can use all the different functions. So just to show you, uh, this is the actual uh, URL. You can go and check out all the function that it has to offer. And it's pretty, pretty damn amazing. So you got select all, you can insert data, you can update it, delete it. And then you also, you have a regular all purpose query that you could utilize to um, do whatever you want. <laughs> all right. So that's that. So in this case, I'm just using, I'm not going to go into like the in depth, how to utilize the class. That's why I gave you the link. You can just go ahead and paste it and take a look at it. All the documentation is there. But in this case, I'm using select. So basically this uses a regular a your MySQL uh, statement. And I'm going to grab all of the table, assign it to a table or uh, a uh, variable called a JSON object called rather a rose. And then I'm going to put it out as a JSON object by using the JSON encoded in PHP. And once it gets to this point, and then this is where I'm just canceling it out to make sure I get all the data. So just to give you an idea, if I go here, just clean this out over here. So this spits it out, but on the console log, here is all of my row of data. It is amazing. All right, so let's move on. So the next part is this function which I declared it over here. I'm using, I'm literally like literally I'm going here. This is the data and I'm going to say all of the rows. Literally, that's what I'm doing right here. And I'm just going to put it here. That's all. I don't have to program anything else. 
I'm just literally referencing it to where the JSON is coming from. And then I can either assign a column name. In this case, I am. I'm calling it a rec like record ID, first, last, email, IP address, and so on. Because in the table, it is labeled the columns like this. But I can customize it to call it whatever the hell I want. All right. That's that, and then I'm going to put it into the screen data. The next part is where the magic will happen. And what kind of magic is that? It is this kind of magic. So for in other words, we got this data. We got this data tables uh, incorporated in here, and it looks amazing. We can filter through it, go back and forward all that good stuff. So if I want to update any one of these columns, all I got to do is click here, literally just click in it, type it in, whatever I want to type it in, and then click out of it, it will automatically go and update it, as you can see. And that is something. In order for that to take place, I have to know which row does this belong to and which column do I want to update it? So in other words, this is row ID number one. And this is column name, first name, last name, email, IP address. So I want to make sure I assign a custom attribute to each one of these columns and also make this particular column or cell, if you will, edible, which means if I click on it, I should be able to type it. All right. And then when I click out of it, it's going to go via Ajax request and update. All right. So let's go over here. And that's what I am doing it here. So I just clear, I declared a regular record ID variable, assigned it the value of zero. And now what I'm saying is, go to my table. So in this case, if I look through here, I'll just do 10 entries. So if I go here, over here, so I'm saying go through my table, which t each TR, loop through it, which is row one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, so on and so forth. And then within this row, find column one, in this case, this get its text value, in this case is ID, and take this ID and assign it to each one of the column that follows. In this case, it would be this, 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 this. So just to give you an idea, so I have this, and I also assign this call as update single column, and then I assign the column name, record ID, record so that I know exactly what record I need to go and update it. And then I added this custom attribute call content editable equal true. And what that makes it is it makes your regular div into editable, which means I could just click on it and edit it, and that's that. So that's what's happening here. It is very powerful strategy. If you implement it, you could literally just change your project into the next level. So let's go over here. Let's look at it here. So here we go. So we got the TR, table TR, each one of those. And then each one of those, I'm going to click on TBLTD, which is your column. And then within the column, look for this container column name equal to this. And if this is ID, and if ID is equal to ID, then set that record ID to be whatever that, that particular column has. So once again, go to this row and loop through all of these columns, the first row column. If the first one is ID, take this number one and then assign it to record ID. If it is not ID, then add this custom attribute and also add a class called update single row. And I'm going to add this custom attribute called 
record ID and editable. All right, so that is that. And then every time someone clicks on any one of those columns, it's going to take this particular block of code and it's going to grab the ID, the column name, and the value, the value being whatever that is in here that I added. That is the value. And then it's going to send it to Ajax request over here. And then I'm just going to literally sanitize it, which means if somebody types in anything crazy to hack into my database, they won't be able to do it with this particular uh, function that I wrote. And once that is here, and then I'm going to go into my table with this block of code and update it. So that is that, ladies and gentlemen. And if you found this particular video a very helpful, so do me a favor, give it a thumbs up, number one. Number two, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And uh, if you have any requests that you feel like uh, you, it could help you in your project, definitely hop on over to my site, which is Code with Mark. Uh, just to give you an idea, call with Mark and then click on contact and fill up with this particular contact form and send it to me. And also, this is a request that was made to me, literally, the process that I'm explaining to you right now. Some gentleman just sent me an email saying, hey, can you create something like that? So it will help me in my project. And that is why I, I have created this. So hopefully you are able to utilize this information that I share into your project. And uh, I really, really hope uh, that you are really enjoying this kind of content I'm creating it. So if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing. And if you feel like I missed something in here as far as the mastering data table, uh, do leave a comment below and I will definitely look into reading it. And I'll talk to you guys later on. As I always say, happy coding.